previously on Redbeard's Garage. So we didn't know what we was gonna do about seats in this big boat. This thing is a huge go-kart, so we wanted car seats. That's what I kind of designed it around. I wanted us to sit comfortably in this cockpit. So uh, I've already welded some angle iron in there, and I've made a few marks. I need to drill some holes now. But uh, an awesome subscriber, he has a YouTube channel. There was two of them, Bubsification and Etards Adventures. Thank you very much for these Honda Civic seats. They still had the sliders on them and everything. Of course, we'd have wanted to go with leather, so when we hit some mud, they ain't gonna get soaking wet, but this is freaking awesome. We can either get some waterproof seat covers for them. So make sure to go follow them. All their links are in the description below. That was Bubsification and Etard Adventures. Uh, awesome guys we met, talked for about 30 minutes, and uh, we got these seats from them. That was awesome that they, he drove like an hour and a half up here to give me these seats. So that's freaking sweet because I didn't want to go dig through a junkyard. I don't have time really to go dig through a junkyard right now. And this dude just came all the way up from a couple towns over. That is awesome. So Bubsification and Etard Adventures, thank you very much. All your links are in the description. So go check them out. Go give them a subscribe. They do a bunch of um, pit bike stuff. So go watch them. We're going to have them on a video very soon. That we're going to rip through the mountains with them. my lovely wife cut this four by seven inch piece of i don't know an eighth inch thick of steel so we got the fronts mounted solid of these seats now we got to mount the back what i'm going to try to do is uh slide this piece of steel in basically like that mm. under both of those and i'm going to notch it to fit around this pipe then i can weld it all the way right here right here and then weld it on the the front up there and that should give it a really good mount then we got to address the other mounts on the seats uh, probably with some angle i'm not sure yet i'm just gonna have to look at what's the best way to to mount those but before i can mount these i'm going to have to fully weld this pipe right here because of course it'll block it so we're gonna take the seat belts out of these uh, Civic seats. I've already taken one out. So basically all you do is there's two Phillips head screws. One at the front of this plastic, one at the back. I'll pull those out. Then we have a 9 16 bolt. And there we go. And we do not need this. That's the plug for the seat belt alarm. Uh, so now we can put this trim piece back on because we do want it on there for the fancy pantsness. Alright, All right, so now we're going to start working on the dashboard since we got the seats all installed. So I'm gonna do a 45 angle. It'll be, you know, somewhat like that from about this location. So once we get our 45s bent, then we can come off off of the dashboard down to here and put like a small, maybe even a 45 bend in the middle to kind of get it like a, a Jeep hood. You know what the new Jeep hoods, hoods look like. So I think that'll look great. So now we just gotta bend our, our first 45 and I'm gonna leave nine inches of overhang off of my 
my bend. That looks about right. So once this is notched, it'll set. And this might be a little, it won't be real tricky, but yeah, I think this notch isn't gonna be a standard notch. It's gonna be kind of angled on there. So now we're bending our our 30 degree bends to put this little nose in it. Of course, this one isn't cut the link and is and isn't notched. This was actually a scrap piece we had that we was bending 15 degrees bends on, and we messed up in our on our measurements and had too wide of a straight piece in between the two bends. So it's per, it works out per. We're going to end up using every piece of this pipe uh, other than the tiny cutoff pieces. So now we have to measure this at. 11 and a half inches and that's where our bend's going to start to match the other one so there we go slide it in there we're doing a 30 degree bend and then we can cut both of them down to size notch them set them in there and tack them into place the only reason i'm doing this little nose i think it would look better than just a straight straight slant piece it gives a little bit more depth to the front end and we're going to put it all the way out probably to like right there so we bent it without letting y'all see ha! um now we just have to notch both sides and then we can set her down in there and give her a fat weld some of the go power sports um, spindle knuckles these are the parts you weld onto the go-kart and then your spindles go in between with the bolt that sticks out for your front tire we use these all the times for these uh, engine swing arms I drilled them out for a 5-8 hole because when we was adapting them to the other go-kart we needed a 5-8 hole because that's what it had but this one didn't necessarily need it but we already had them uh, cut down so that's what we we're using. When it's all even now. I can throw a bead on her. And once that cools down, I will also take it off and weld the back side just to make sure it's strong. Actually, it probably don't even need welded because it'll be welded fully like this one is on the frame of the go-kart. So we really necessarily don't even have to because the whole entire thing, top and bottom, will be welded. Those are pretty handy though. Okay, so I know it's gonna be a lot of repetitive stuff on this build because, I mean, we're bending pipe, we're notching pipe, we're tacking pipes in place. So uh, we're trying not to bore you guys too much. This is how we're gonna do the engine um, little pivot points. We're gonna weld these to these big rectangle tubing. These are like an inch by two and a half, I would believe. Now I'm curious, um, all three, an inch and a half. <laughs> so that's an inch and a half by three inch uh, rectangle tubing and it's like quarter of an inch thick. So it's super strong. The reason why I put that there, that's how they did the Yerf Dog too. We're copying a lot of stuff Yerf Dog did because it's our first build and we can learn from this one and apply it to the next build, which is gonna be very soon. As soon as this one's done, we're pretty much gonna start another one. Uh, I'm addicted. So this will give us a really strong point that's welded in, you know, like multiple places. I welded these pipes halfway around on each side. These, this pipe is welded all the way on the bottom. The rest has just got good fat 
tacks on it. We can get this fully welded out. We can get the back seat mounts fully welded out. So now I've got to pull the seats out again. And uh, yeah, but I think it looks freaking awesome because look at the, the dashboard and the front front bars. I just love the way it looks. And we have some huge fog lights. That's going to look pretty awesome. You want to hold them in there? Yeah, sitting right here. Let me grab one. Nylight sent us some, uh, some huge fog lights that's going to be like they're made for this build. Oh gosh, about to open. And Nylight was the first company, LED company, that sponsored us because I used to install car audio a lot and electronics on cars and I used Nylight all the time because they was affordable. Yeah, so one on each side right there, these massive freaking fog lights. I think it looks pretty awesome. But Brad Hill made us an awesome gas tank and my brother welded the tabs on. Brad Hill made these tabs and sent them with it. My brother welded those in place and then for a petcock, we just welded a solid piece of like half inch thick of aluminum now i can drill through this and tap it for whatever fuel bung i want to use i think i'm going to use a vacuum controlled uh, fuel bung i thought about even putting two fuel bungs on it so each motor has their own so if one engine dies it shuts off that petcock if another engine dies it shuts off the other one so i might tee the vacuum together and i mean i wouldn't see a problem with that if you guys think there'd be a problem um i know there's a few geniuses out there uh let me know if it would hurt to tee the vacuum together i wouldn't see a problem with that but so we can tee the vacuums together and uh, run one petcock. The only problem with that is if one engine dies, you're still getting fuel. So I'm, I don't know, I'm trying to be safe because we've had some accidents. Oh, you're on fire, you're on fire! <laughs> so this will mount, you know, right in this area on a angle. So I don't know where exactly, but I like that a lot. Thank you, Brad Hill. You can uh, find Brad Hill his link is always in our just video descriptions from today on. We'll put his email address. You can email him, tell him your dimensions. He makes custom gas tanks and custom battery boxes. Um, so really anything out of diamond plate or sheet metal he can make, or sheet aluminum. Uh, so yeah, let's get these seats taken out again. This will be the third time. And then the next time they go in, they can stay for a while. So we need to build the hoop that's going to go around the engine and house the shock mounts, the upper shock mounts. So I think to, to do that, we're going to have to remove the air box, muffler, and gas tank. We was going to run these completely stock at first, but uh, who are we kidding? Let's run them with the Go Power Sports Performance Kit, which is the air filter adapter, air filter, and jet. And then we'll put a Go Power Sports header on it with some RLB mufflers. And then the gas tank, we wouldn't plan on using the stock gas tanks anyways. Brad Hill made us that custom gas tank that'll mount up above the engine. So uh, we're going to remove this because that's going to save us about six inches of depth on these engines. So we can bend a, a 90 hoop that'll go around this. Like a lot of go-karts have, they have that little luggage area. That luggage area doubles as the upper shock mount. So that's exactly what we're going to do on this. The muffler is two 13 millimeter nuts. Come on, baby. Or half inch, whatever you got. This has got one of those weird mufflers that have the little, I don't know if that's like an EGR type thing or, or what, but it's weird. You got the vacuum up top, vacuum on the valve cover, big blocks. Any big block engine has a, has a nut under the, the air box holding it on as well. So you can take this top part off. And there's another tin right here on the back. Now the gas tank has two tins on the front. And there's half inch nuts on the rear of the gas tank. There we go.
it is. You got to make sure we've messed up a piece of pipe the, our first day bending because we forgot to level this one out. You want this one level so your 90s aren't cockeyed. We messed up first time, but it's okay. There we go. We just need to cut nine and a half inches now off of this, and then we got a got to notch each side. Then we can tack this. In place. So we've been wanting to mark a solid piece of pipe, do all of our bends, cut the excess off, and then weld it on. How we've been doing it is we'll bend one, we'll figure up where the next bend needs to start and uh, that's just time consuming. So we think we figured it out. Um, we want this roll cage hoop, the hoop behind the seats to be 27 inches from the very top of it uh, to, to the bottom bar. That gives me enough room to have a helmet on, which we never wear helmets usually in buggies, but we should always wear helmets to be honest. But that gives me room with a helmet that gives me four inches between my helmet and the roll cage. So how we're gonna do this is we want it 27 inches tall. So we made our first mark at 20 inches. So that's where the start of our first 90 degree bend will be. So after the bend, this bend radius, the 90 degree bend, uh, this is the 90, from this right here is seven inches. So seven inches of distance, correct? Seven inches this way as well. So after we start our bend at 20 inches, that'll make us 27 inches tall from the top of the pipe. So in that bend, you waste uh, of pipe. A 90 degree bend takes nine and three eighths worth of pipe to make that bend. So we made our next mark at nine and three eighths. Okay, so that will be the end of our bend right there. So now we measured from this. So our width was what, 38, 48 inches? Our width 48. was 48, and it's probably complicated, but I wanted to explain it to you guys because y'all gripe if I don't. So it's 48 inches, the width of our whole hoop. So, after that nine and three eighths mark, we're gonna minus 14 from our overall number because the two bend radiuses is seven inches for each side. So we minus 14 off both sides. Okay, you with me? So 34 inches we put our next mark. After, and then, so that's our straight piece in between the two bends is right there. So our next bend will start right here. And then this is the nine and three eighths, so this will be the end of our bend once it's bent. And then I marked out here, uh, 20 inches from that mark to cut off. I hope you guys can understand it. It's a lot to take in. Trust me, I know. Uh, but it's taking us four solid days. Yeah, we're just figuring this thing out. So that's what we came up with. Let's see how she works. We're gonna get this lined up. We'll throw you on tripod. We'll bend this puppy, and we'll see how she does. So our measurements all worked out right now we can just cut this pipe off and uh, notch everything and we should be golden um, and then we can tack this on and we're gonna have to get the front row cage rolled in my brother's work I don't have a pipe roller tube roller so we're gonna get that done next so one thing I want to note about these Duramax engines for some reason the throttle mechanisms on them don't come with any um, throttle cable eyelets most predators or all predators have an eyelet here and an eyelet here that looks like this so it has this little cable eyelet there and one there so you can install your throttle cable and then it has a throttle cable hold down here and here so you can run your cable from the rear of the engine or from the side well this one does not have it from factory i don't know why probably because this engine you know is more designed for i don't know it's just it's crazy to me how they put the holes for it but didn't add any of it so luckily when i put my coonies and stuff on predators i keep all the hardware throttle hardware so all the 212 stuff works on it and you normally have two of these on a predator so you always have one extra so whatever one i'm not using i usually take off and put up so i have stuff like this so now we have to pull off this to pop this eyelet because it does have a little sir clip 
right there that goes on the bottom. And I just took off the throttle stop. This screw is in there so you don't, you know, twist the throttle <clears throat> too far. And from factory, these are set at different tightnesses. So if you're, you know, if you know you should get 30 mile per hour with whatever gearing you have um, and whatever RPM you're pushing, make sure you check this throttle stop. You can I always just take them out. Uh, unless I remove the governor because then you want your throttle to stop when your butterfly is fully open if that makes sense so now we got to take this 10 millimeter nut off right here so just remember the order this stuff comes off um, because there's this little weird notched piece there there's a, a bent washer that kind of helps hold tension against this right there once you pull this arm up, you have to unhook all the springs from it. And you can really do this with, and leave that little spring hooked up. It's not super hard to put these throttle eyelets on. So now we just put a set of pliers on. It's hard to see. Get that clipped on there. So now that'll let that eyelet spin, but won't let it come off. And now we have a throttle on this hoss. Yourself in there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that I can just slip right out, so I just stand there for a little. I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh -huh. I need some freaking locking wheels. But uh, like you can like section, there be some wages in there. Yeah. Off in the the ninety buck pop that you seen. Me and Becca bend earlier, it just looked dumb, just being too simple, so we did 245s. Should look a lot better. We've did a lot since we picked up camera but i didn't want to film just bending cutting notches and and all that jazz but we got the front row cage on i got the bar put in between the the top of the window and then we did this we had this big hoop just it was a piece of scrap that we bent uh for the original hoop that was going to go behind the the seats and then we was going to run row bars off of that hoop it looks stupid you know this is our first build so we're going to have mistake pieces like this well, he's able to reuse it as this little luggage area, and I think it looks awesome. I'm real. This is going to be an awesome buggy. It looks a lot like the Zircon, and we weren't even looking at the Zircon when I built this. We was actually the floor pan. We took measurements off the 670 and just added a lot to it. But everything else was pretty much free balling it, and it turned out to look a lot like a big brother to the Zircon, which I'm okay with because I like the Zircon a lot. Um, we did steal everything off the 670, like the uh, front suspension which is sitting right beside you and the steering we got off the 670 i threw a new steering wheel on there so i'm going to cut these clamps off and make my own clamps for this one and a half uh, pipe because these was for a one and a quarter so now i'm working on these back shock mounts i got this all tacked up and i box them in with some flat stock so these will be super strong once i fully weld them those are the 360 shocks from Go Power Sports. I also threw a header and a muffler, air filter, and jet on these engines. I think I filmed all that. It's been a day or so since we filmed, so I forget what you've seen and what you haven't seen. So I just wanted to really quickly explain why we didn't film this buggy build like we normally do our builds. Normally we show you everything from start to finish, uh, but we was contacted by the Discovery Channel to be on their Daily Planet show uh, that actually aired in Canada so when they called us they gave us like a two-week window to you know from the time their cameraman was going to come out so for about three or four days we continued the twin engine build on that yerf dog frame and then i said if this is going to be on tv we're not going to bolt this huge massive engine section on this little dinky go-kart so i decided to build a full two buggy 
So I ordered the metal. By the time the metal got here and we got ready to start bending all the tubing, we had five days before they was gonna get here. So we built this buggy completely from the ground up in five days. So these videos you're seeing, even though we act like we're taking our time learning this tubing bender, it actually was over just a few days. The videos get more scarce and more scarce as time goes. If my wife wouldn't have picked up the camera, you wouldn't have got any footage because we were so rushed, I had no time whatsoever to film. So the videos may get a little, you know, they may skip ahead a lot uh, in the future episodes because of the fact that we was working 12 hour days, five days straight trying to get this buggy ready and the front end ended up being messed up, which you guys will see later, but we'll explain that in a later video. So the link to the Discovery Channel um, episode that we was in is in the description below. You can go check that out. It starts at about 11 uh, minutes and 40 seconds. So you can go check that out and see how it did. I think the episode turned out awesome, but just wanted to explain everything to you guys because this thing starts to jump around. It's going to get a little crazy at the end of this build, but we are building two more one-seater buggies. You'll get to see every piece of tubing get put on that um on those builds so we've got a lot of stuff coming with this tubing bender and i apologize for saying pop i'm probably going to continue to say pop uh, it's a habit i don't know i just cannot get in my brain that we're working with tubing uh not pop but you know people's going to hate me no matter what so thank you guys for watching check out that link to the discovery channel episode and uh stay tuned to next week's video on this twin engine build uh i'm out Redbeard's Garage is powered by GoPowerSports.com. GoPowerSports has a huge amount of awesome go-kart and mini bike parts. And when making your purchase, use the Redbeard discount code in the upper right-hand corner of your shopping cart to grab yourself a sweet deal. Hit that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell is on so you'll never miss another episode. And go check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Pinterest to stay up to date with the channel. Guys, always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.